150 years ago, the only bank in the valley was the bank of the river. Then there were a few farms and some commerce on the river. When the railroad came chugging along, the Wilsons, the Smiths, the McGillicuddy's and Millers hopped off the train and started building homes and families. What they actually built was a village, complete with a one-window bank. About that time, in the shed back of their father's blacksmith shop, the Miller boys started building gidgets. The gidgets worked. Worked? I'll say they did. Thomas Edison and Henry Ford couldn't invent a better gidget, so they put ours in all their machines. So we had to have a factory. Oh yes, the bank financed the factory as well as practically everything else that ever happened here in the valley. Well, the Miller boys, cousins, and the Kellys, Kroskys, and friends came to work in the factory. Their families grew and prospered. Suddenly, our valley was a city. And the traffic in the bank grew. Paperwork piled up so fast, our bank figuratively speaking, seemed to bulge. So we opened a branch out in a suburb. Then what do you suppose happened? Our suburb had a suburb. Today, our many-windowed bank has many problems. Because as volume goes up, accuracy tends to go down. Yet, costs rise with volume. Our bank executives want more information and they want it faster. They need to know the availability of funds every day. They've got to have significant balance changes brought to their attention immediately. They must know which accounts are profitable and which accounts are unprofitable. In this seventh decade of the 20th century, when we can communicate information to and from satellites in space, it must be possible to get information from the bookkeeping department to the executives fast enough for the bank to provide a reasonable profit to its stockholders. It is not only possible, it is practical. Of course, you know about the machine language adopted by the American Bankers Association. Standard, uniform, magnetic characters that make possible the first industry-wide electronic communications language. It's a common language that can be read by both men and machines. With this language, the banking community takes a giant stride into the future. Banks can communicate with electronic speed. They can step ahead of their city's growth. They can have special reports, facts, figures and statistics, if they choose a fully automated system. Banking, like all American business, is a competitive business. The right system puts you in a better competitive position with better, more complete services for your customers and more efficient methods in your bank. Choosing the right system isn't just a matter of choosing devices. No, an automated system is a system of integrated devices and ideas and services. Of course, it is important to evaluate the hardware, but it is just as important to evaluate the experience, ideas, and services behind the hardware. Let's look at a real system which has the ability to automate your bank accounting operations effectively and efficiently, and imagine the benefits it can provide for your bank and customers. Typical of the many bank operations that this system can perform is demand deposit accounting. Automation reduces error, this saves time, money, and pleases customers. Peak loads can be handled easily. You can set up a system with a cushion for expansion without enlarging your bank or employing more personnel. Customer statements are prepared automatically. In addition, a great variety of very valuable reports can be produced by a modern computer that is integrated into a correctly planned system. Hold or stop payment suspect items can be automatically detailed. Accounts with insufficient funds to cover current demands can be listed. Overdraft accounts with past performances can be noted. 
zero balance accounts that are close out suspects can be brought to light. Key account fluctuation reports indicating significant balance changes can be developed. A no deposit report could highlight those large commercial accounts with no recent deposit activity. Your accounts can be evaluated according to type, industry, location, according to any classification you want. In a nutshell, the right system can enable you or any other banker to do a much better job. Information handling systems in wide variety are available for large or small banking operations. Systems of unit record equipment. Systems such as the 1401, the 1410, the 7074. Let's look more closely at one of them as it might be used for one of the many jobs it can perform in your bank. Demand deposit accounting. Here is the proof inscriber, the unit inscriber. The 1401 with its processor, card read punch and high speed printer, the reader sorter, magnetic tape units. The proof inscriber or unit inscriber inscribes each item in magnetic characters for further processing. The reader sorter reads these magnetic characters and sorts the items at speeds up to 96,000 items per hour. It may be used independently for sorting or as part of a system and under control of the stored program for reading and sorting items. The processor controls all computing and all input-output operations. The card read punch under the control of the processor is used for card input to and output from the system, reading up to 880 column cards per minute and punching up to 250 of these cards per minute. In basic card systems, each card may contain all information about a particular account or transaction. The high-speed printer under the control of the processor prints the information at speeds up to 600 lines a minute. If only numeric information is needed, Printing speeds of 1,285 lines a minute can be realized. The basic system becomes even more powerful by the addition of magnetic tapes, which can contain all of your accounting information and process it at tremendous speeds. The extra speed and capacity of random access memory is also compatible with this system. The building block concept makes this system practical for smaller volume growing banks as well as high activity banks. Now let's watch each unit as it contributes to the total function of the system. This machine looks very much like the proof machines you've seen in many banks, quite probably your own bank. The proof inscriber does the same job, but in addition, it inscribes the checks with magnetic ink according to ABA specifications. Because it is a familiar machine, your personnel will be able to operate it. It sorts, lists, proves, and endorses checks in a single operation. To the already imprinted routing, transit, and account number, the proof inscriber adds additional magnetic characters, the control and transaction code, and the dollar amount. After the last item has been inscribed, a total is imprinted in magnetic ink on a control slip for each batch of documents. This batch control slip for each package is inscribed with the batch control number and total dollar amount to aid in tight control of subsequent processing. This flexible proof inscriber can be set up to classify regular accounts, classify large volume accounts, commercial or other accounts, and miscellaneous items such as general ledger items and internal debits and credits. This kind of distribution is relatively simple from the operator's point of view, for she is classifying according to number rather than name. On us and other internal items are inscribed automatically, a byproduct of the normal proving function. As common language becomes more common, when transit and routing information is imprinted in magnetic characters on more checks, foreign checks may also be selectively inscribed with the dollar amount, multiplying the benefits of the system. 
A high production economical unit inscriber does the same job inscribing checks and control slips, but omits the sorting operation of the proof inscriber. It's a high speed machine built to be operated at the maximum capabilities of your personnel. Now, let's watch a reader sorter in action. The checks and control slips are put on this platform. You can load a good size stack or just a few items. The twin loading platforms make practical continuous feeding. Let's take a closer look. The checks are aligned and a magnetic charge is placed on the inked characters. This exclusive multi-channel reading head assures maximum accuracy and character recognition. The checks are routed automatically to the proper pocket. Special pockets are selected for payroll or dividend accounts and rejected items. All the pockets are easily accessible to the operator. Every digit of every field is checked on the first pass so that invalid items are pulled out for corrections right at the start. At full speed, the sorter counts to assure that each character required is present. It may operate independently for digit by digit sorting as we see here. Sorting items at speeds up to 96,000 an hour to accomplish fine sorting. However, the reader sorter's full potential is realized only when it is used as part of a data processing system under control of the stored program in the processor. This is the processing unit, the electronic device that takes over the paperwork. It houses the arithmetical, logical, and input-output functions and controls the entire system through stored programs. That is, a set of step-by-step -step instructions stored in the memory. Direct the entire system to perform the job desired. This results in a uniform manner of handling each transaction according to thoughtful policies of management, instead of having policies interpreted in many different ways. To realize the power of the processor and in order to understand the integration of selected units into a demand deposit system, we must imagine the flow of information from unit to unit. The reader sorter reads information from the checks, deposit and batch control slips to the processor. Here, the information is analyzed according to the instructions of the detailed program. All this is done with such speed that an instruction returns from the processor routing the check to the correct pocket while it travels mere fractions of an inch in the sorter. The information from the documents is first used to print a batch proof list and ledger control totals. At the same time, the information from the checks and other items is stored on magnetic tape. 350,000 or more transactions on a single reel. Here is the printer under the control of the processor using information directly from documents to produce the batch proof list and ledger control totals. It prints information at rates up to 96,000 transactions an hour, up to four transactions on each line. These transactions on tape are then sorted to account sequence. After the information is organized in account sequence on tape, it is used to update or post customer account records on new tapes. During the posting run, the trial balance is printed and proved. The punched cards still play an important role even though all the accounting information is on the tapes. For example, cards initiate requests for special statements or signal special conditions such as overdrawn accounts or stop payment suspects. They make practical control over uncollected funds, holes, and may be used to insert new customer information during the posting run. Only after all the bookkeeping has been accomplished on magnetic tape is the system ready to produce customer information. Here is a summary statement. Here is a detailed statement. The total amount of checks paid and the number of checks paid. 
the number of deposits and their total amount. For management, here are the hold or stop pay suspect items. Accounts with insufficient funds. Overdrawn accounts. Zero balance accounts. Key account fluctuations. No deposit accounts. Many other valuable reports may be prepared by this equipment that actually proves its work as it works. During this process, the reader sorter is free to perform its important labor-saving, fine sorting operation. In addition to demand deposit accounting, the system is ideally suited for many more applications, such as loan, trust, and savings accounting. You have seen some of the equipment used in the most powerful banking system available today. Of equal importance are other factors that make the machines a functioning, efficient, integrated system. Experience, ideas, and services mean greater profitability to your bank. Local representatives with specialized training and experience in both banking and data processing systems assist the banker in choosing, planning, and installing the system that best fits the needs of his bank. Experts in physical planning assist in site selection and layout. Local customer engineers install the equipment and assure its continued performance. The availability of library routines and personal programming assistance through skilled system engineering is essential to the efficient performance of the system. Outstanding among these is the programmed applications library for demand deposit accounting, a complete package program for the 1401 tape system, which eliminates a major part of the programming effort. It can be readily adapted to the requirements of the individual bank. Test centers across the country enable pre-testing of these individual programs. Data centers provide system time by the hour. Personnel trained in mathematics and science assist in the development of advanced banking concepts and the solution to many complex banking problems. Teams of research engineers seek constantly to improve banking equipment to meet the challenges of tomorrow. Specialized schools for bank executives and operating personnel are taught by instructors using modern techniques. In addition to these teams of specialists, assistance at the local level helps to make this system the most practical and efficient system available. It is engineered for growth. The modular concept enables capacity to grow through the addition of units as the bank grows. It is today's system engineered with tomorrow in mind designed to help your bank help your community grow, and grow it will.